Hello, I'm Professor Atul Patak from Monaco and happy to be part of this exciting program of UOPCR21. Welcome everybody. I'm delighted to share with you some thoughts about this uh, exciting trial, which is the Radiance HGN Trio trial and try to understand what does this trial mean for us as clinician and especially for our patient uh, for the next uh, coming months. Uh, focusing on clinical practice. The first uh, very important point is going back to the design of this trial. Uh, this trial uh, is, a, is a really an achievement because it ticks all the boxes of what we call the gold standard trial. First, the type of patient. The type of patient who have been included in this trial are so-called hypertensive patients who are not controlled despite receiving three drugs. So we were formerly calling these patients resistant hypertensive patients. They are now con considered as uncontrolled hypertensive patients because despite triple therapy, they were not able to reach target blood pressure. Now, this trial has taken into account all the literature and scientific evidence of the past three years. First, it has decided to switch this patient to a single pill combination therapy in order to increase adherence. And I will go back to this, but imagine during the trial, 80% of the patient were adherent to the antihypertensive treatment. Second, the evaluation of the patient has been done on the gold standard, which is ambulatory blood pressure measurement, both for the selection, but also for the outcome because the primary efficacy endpoint was the measurement of daytime ABPM systolic blood pressure at two months. Finally, these patients are patients we are used to see in clinical practice. This is a very practical trial answering to a very practical question. Is it possible by offering renal denervation using a device which is based on ultrasound energy to reduce blood pressure and to improve control of blood pressure in these so-called difficult to control hypertensive patients. Now, you can see on the left part of the slide, the key entry criteria were quite standard. Adult patient receiving three drugs, uncontrolled despite these three drugs, no secondary hypertension, no major cardiovascular event, and with ineligible renal artery anatomy. Now, if you look in the middle of the slide, look at the flow and the way the patient have been managed. Once they have been decided to be included, they were switched to a single pill combining three drugs for four weeks. And if despite the single pill, the blood pressure was still uncontrolled as assessed by ABPM, and if their renal arteries were eligible, they would be randomized to receive renal denervation or a sham procedure, again, the highest standard of what you would expect in this type of trial. The patient would then be follow up for two months and the primary efficacy endpoint was to state how was blood pressure two months after being randomized and as measured by daytime ambulatory blood pressure focusing on systolic blood pressure. Now, look at the results. I think that Radiance Hypertension Trio is a really breakthrough and landmark trial in the field because it's able to show that these patients had significant, clinically meaningful blood pressure reduction as assessed by ABPM. If you look at the right part of the slide, you can see that there was a significant drop by almost eight millimeters of mercury in patient included in the renal denervation arm, while those who were receiving the sham procedure 67 out of them had a slight diminution of three millimeters of mercury. So there was a significant difference and a significant drop in blood pressure in these hypertensive patients receiving at least three drugs for their hypertension. And these results are really important because they totally go in line with what we have learned from a previous trial. Remember the call, the Radiance Hypertension Solo Trial which was a similar trial in terms of design, 
a totally difference in terms of patient population, because in this trial, patients were less severe hypertensive patients, and especially they were weaned off the drugs. That's why the trial is called SOLO, because these patients had no drugs. And you see that the amount of drop in these less complicated patients is quite similar to the amount of drop in blood pressure in the most complicated patient. This is what we call external validity. When two trials, which are adapted in two types of patient population, are sending exactly the same type of signal. The therapy is working, is reducing blood pressure in a significant way in both less severe and more severe hypertensive patients. Now, as clinicians, we are always struggled but by the problem, how will I go, how will I translate this into my clinical practice? How will this impact my clinical practice? I think to imagine what type of patient could be suitable candidate for renal denervation in our clinical practice, you have to look at this table and maybe focus on the clinical characteristic of these patients. In the solo patient, a solo trial patient, you can see that the patient were more female patient and slightly less overweight. And with the baseline blood pressure, which was lower, because as I told you, they are probably earlier in their history and their natural history of hypertension. On the other side, if you look at the trio patient, less female, probably more complicated patient, you see 30% are having diabetes and as expected, uncontrolled hypertensive patient despite triple therapy. So the baseline blood pressure was higher. As you see here, the screening office was, blood pressure was a 160 over 100, while in solo 140 over 90. And logically, as expected, the screening of antihypertensive medication was higher in the trio patient than in the solo patient. So if you would imagine uh, how to apply in clinical practice this type of data. We have two sets of trials, one in less severe, uncontrolled, younger, hypertensive patient with a lower cardiovascular risk who could benefit of the therapy, which is reducing indeed blood pressure in patients who are not receiving any drugs or a very tiny amount of drugs. And on the other side, because we know that these patients sometimes get complicated, they will require more drugs, their cardiovascular risk will increase. On the other spectrum, these more complicated hypertensive patients who still get exactly the same amount of benefit when they are offered renal denervation with a significant and clinical drop in blood pressure as assessed in the TRIO trial. So in conclusion, I think that what we have learned from the TRIO data is that this trial meets what we call all the gold standards of an excellent trial in the field of renal denervation. It is assessing in the population of hypertensive patients who are not controlled despite triple therapy that renal denervation using ultrasound is able to reduce blood pressure in a significant way, but also in a clinically meaningful way. And that these data are confirming the data from the solo trials in less complicated hypertensive patient, broadening the number of patients who could benefit from the therapy in the very next future. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention.